Well hi there fellas, my name's Pete Rashford and uh, I'm making a little video for you just to show you how my um, diver overlay system works. Okay. So first of all, we want to put an overlay up on the screen. The simplest way to put an overlay up on the screen here would be just pressing page up. That would bring up an overlay on Diver 1 screen, as you can see there, yeah? And then if I wanted to bring one up on Diver 2, I would just go Control, Control 2, which now switches us across to Diver 2, and I'd press the page up there. And that would bring a screen up there as well, yeah? Now, I don't know if you can see those overlays. They're not very clear, as I can see. So what I'm going to do, there's another function which they call text with no video okay so I'm going to switch this into text of no video so you can see what's going on so first of all as we're on Diver 2 at the moment I'm just going to hit the key stroke it's shift F3 and that'll take away the camera and we've got a black and white screen there with text writing on there okay and I'll do the same thing I'll move back over to Diver 1 which of course is control control one that's correct and uh, I'll be doing the same thing I'll be pressing shift F3 and that's cleared that screen yeah so as I'm using a DVR over uh, DVR to show you this uh, the background is set up in a quad we've got diver one on the left diver two on the right deck and deck I've made them up as Okay, now as you see, there's a timestamp there. That timestamp is relevant on both screens, no matter what. So, if you were using a DVR system and you need to confirm that, all you have to do is double click on that, and there's your Diver 1 screen. You can see Diver 1 down the bottom here, and then you've got your timestamp there. So, it is prominent on all screens, maybe because when you're looking at it there on that screen, it looks like it's not showing up, but it's everywhere. I'll just go back to the main screen again, double click, there you go, back to the main screen, there's your quad. I'll do the same on Diver 2 so you can see, there's a Diver 2 overlay. Quite plainly you can see that I've set it up as a contractor, the client, their location, where the vessel is using, the dive number, who the diver, who the diver is, who Diver 2 is, the supervisor, his name, and then the task which the diver will be doing. And also, well, if I mentioned, the standby diver is in readiness, ready for when we're ready to dive. Okay, so I'll just go back to the main screen again. So, if for instance, you know, like you, um, we had to, this is the thing about what I was mentioning about the system. If diver one screen went went down, we lost camera, for instance. So if we go uh, control, control one, and diver one screen, say for instance, he lost, he, he, he lost camera, so we'll just do it this way to say page down therefore you just see we wouldn't even see that you'd probably see a blank screen but it's a bonus um, i'm just going to bring that back over so you've got a video you've got text no video i'm just going to do a shift f3 and uh, there you go so that's what you'd have and so what you'd have to do is then you could easily slide across and use work with Diver for, Diver 2 could take over from Diver 1 and Diver 1 could do Diver 2's task if he was doing if he was doing construction and Diver Diver 2 would then take up you could then pop the overlay up so just basically inform that we've ch changed divers and he's taking over the task okay that would be one way of doing it, or otherwise you'd have to bring the divers out and switch over. So I just thought this had been a simpler thing as being able to have two overlays on the diver so you could switch the diver's tasks. The other thing is, if for instance a diver is doing a, doing a construction job and you want to overlay, you want to overlay on him and you want to record that whatever he's doing or an anomaly he's found or something like that, we can do it because there you are in what we call diving mode on Diver 1 at the moment. Just checking we're back in Diver 1. There it is there. What we can do is we could type up a new bit of new bit of stuff we wanted, like so, you know. Whatever we wanted to put up there, we could put up there. Backspace takes it all out like it, like it usually does. 
Yep. And then you can come down and you can move down the cursor down a little bit here, as you can see, and go along and uh, say, say there's a lot of rubbish on there like that and you want to get rid of it in a hurry, we can do the thing which we use with computers and things like that. It's called a clear screen. And you just go Shift F9 and that should take that out. Shift F9 it is. There you are, it's gone. So that's one way of doing it. The other thing which you must take into account when we're talking about this system is also if you didn't have the timestamp like I've got on the DVR, this was this system can put up a a clock a clock and uh, a time date clock. Okay, so it can put up a timestamp, and that's a simple task. Doing that is uh, to use F4. So we'll just pop on F4 on Diver One, and there pops up a. Uh, the clock as you can see quite clearly there it's ticking away there just nicely and there you've got a clock going at 39 for 40 seconds as you can see in front of you there with the correct time of 21.53 okay so now what we need to do is we need to look at is um, we need to look at can we get that off we can take that off no problem in the world that's taken off by doing control F4. That's now gone. And we can do the same on the other diver. Okay. So as I was saying, if you if your diver one was then found an anomaly and you need him to get on to, and you need to put up an overlay for it, it's so simply done it's not funny. You would just go page up. Once you've hit page up, up would come the overlay and you could put in the information and his task would be uh, inspect uh, inspect um, corrosion anomaly on node 456 or something like that so that's easy enough easy enough done so that's the way it, that's basically the way it works um, as I say every time when a diver goes in the water I've set it up that you can go page down and page down will take the overlay off when diver 1 goes in the water control 2 as that if it's diver 2 if I don't know how you set them up they both go in the water at the same time we're now on diver 2 so we'll also set him down and then we change his uh, his overlay. Now, he's, uh, he's on text on video, as you can see, because the video come up straight away. So what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll change him to um, see what he's got there. And um, we'll see what we've got. Shift F3 should bring him up. And he's the same as the other now. So if I go uh, Alt F3... That should bring him up on a normal screen. And if I go control, control one, go back onto diver one again, and do the same thing, alt F3, that should bring him back up on the screen. Right, the, um, as I say, the clearing of the screen, the same, it's just backspace, it's like using a computer, everything else. Uh, I can't really find much more I can tell you about it. I can just tell you about the keyboard. The keyboard is a it's what they call it, is a USB PS2 keyboard. It's, um, it has um, uh, a logical analog, uh, what we call it, um, signal. And uh, it can't be confused just using a normal USB keyboard with it. You have to, it has to be a USB PS2 legacy keyboard. Uh, which I've got, and they're not super expensive by any means. So, um, you, if you buy one of the systems, you'll get one with it, and we can supply critical spares if required. Okay, uh, the integration is very simple, anything like that. If you're hesitant about the integration, you want us to come over, we can organise, we can, we can negotiate coming over to uh, install the system for you and demonstrate it to the to the chaps who will be using it. There's no problem in the world. Okay, then, well, that's me, and uh, I hope to hear from you. So uh, have a good day lads, bye.